for as long as electric cars have been plugging into charging stations to recharge their battery packs, unscrupulous sorts have been trying to make a quick buck by cutting the charging cables clean from the charging station. And as more and more electric vehicles have hit the roads, the number of charging stations have similarly increased, meaning more potential charging stations for criminals to attack. But while to date public charging stations have been the preferred target of miscreants, we're now starting to see some domestic charging stations get hit too, leaving you with a non-functional charging station and possibly a non-functioning car too. So today, we're going to go over the current rise in EV charging station cable theft, explain why it's happening, and for those of you who do have charging stations at home, how you can protect yourself from becoming a victim of this particularly shocking crime. As the 25th most common element in the Earth's crust, copper is commonly used in a huge variety of different industries. And while you might think its primary use is electrical wiring, it is, after all, the next best conductor of electrical currents after silver, its uses cover a wide variety of applications from plumbing to roofing, medicine, and so much more. To date, an estimated 700 million metric tons of copper has been mined and refined in the world. And according to the US Geological Survey, a further 2.1 billion metric tons of additional copper deposits suitable for mining have been identified around the world. Moreover, it estimates 3.5 billion metric tons of copper is, statistically speaking, within the Earth's crust still awaiting discovery. Or to put it another way, humans throughout history have used about 10% of the total copper available in the world. And because of that, you might think that copper isn't particularly valuable. There's lots more of it to go, right? But there are issues. Copper is not only extremely energy intensive to mine. Even in copper rich areas of the world, for example, it's unusual for copper content to be more than 1% of any mined ores. But it also requires a complex refining process that uses either hydrometallurgy, which uses water and then solvents in a complex multi-stage process to leach the ore and get the copper out, or pyrometallurgy, which uses a huge amount of heat to ultimately smelt usable copper from vast amounts of ore, neither of which are particularly environmentally responsible. And to the fact that copper mines are traditionally, although not always, strip mined, it means that we see huge pits gouged into the earth. And I think it's easy to see that despite its abundance, copper is pretty expensive. Oh, and some of the countries where copper deposits are pretty large aren't always countries known for their political stability or human rights policies? It's messy. As usual, mining is always messy. Getting it out of the ground is becoming more expensive and demand for copper is going up, partly because of a rise in industries that use it. Add in geopolitical unrest in some parts of the world and you have the perfect storm for copper prices going up. And today, copper is on average about twice the cost of what it was back in early 2020, with the price at time of filming sitting around $5 per pound, or if you prefer, 11 US dollars per kilogram. While we've seen copper futures priced pretty aggressively in the past, this is a new record, for now at least. And worse still, analysts are warning there's not enough copper being mined today to satisfy demand from both the automotive industry and the electronics industry, especially given the rise in EV and hybrid vehicles in the last decade or so. Which brings me to criminals and their attempts to make a quick buck. The reason why fast charging cables have been traditionally preferred is that they contain a whole lot more copper than your traditional level two charging station. Basically, the higher the current you need to put through a cable, the thicker that cable needs to be to safely transmit power from the charging station to the car. The thicker the conductor, the more efficient the power transfer will be, and the cooler the cable will remain. You only have to lift up a fast charging cable and feel how heavy it is to understand just how much of that is thick copper. Although 
I should note, many new fast charging stations and most modern Tesla superchargers now use liquid-cooled cables designed to allow for a smaller diameter cable to be used and thus reduce overall build costs through reduced copper use. But those cables have their issues for thieves. While older fast charging stations may have heavy duty copper cables that can be cut reasonably easily with the right tool, more and more charging station manufacturers are employing liquid cooled and armored cables in their charging stations that are far harder to cut. Not impossible, mind you, but a lot harder. And if you're trying to steal something without being noticed, using noisy equipment is very often not possible. That said, the reward is high for thieves ballsy enough to get a DC cable removed from a secluded charging station without attracting attention. Which is why we are now starting to see domestic charging stations get targeted. As Canadian EV advocate and EV EMS pioneer Kelly Carmichael found out last month, a brightly shining light from a domestic charging station might just be enough of a signal to thieves that there's a charging station ready for a cable to be stolen. And with most domestic EV charging stations containing on average one kilogram of copper, some more, some less, it's an easy way to make money quickly in what amounts to less than 30 seconds of effort. And based on the research I've been making to prepare this video, scrap copper prices for what's known as bare bright copper wire are about 75-80% to 80 of the price quoted for current copper futures. It is, for many unscrupulous sorts, easy money requiring very little in the way of tools. This video here shows a pair of thieves approaching Carmichael's Leaf as it sits on the driveway. They quickly check nobody is around, unplug the car from its charging station, and then with a set of hefty bolt cutters make off with the cable. In a few hours, a team like this could quite easily snag a half dozen cables or more, and provided they have a sympathetic scrap dealer who asks few questions about where the copper comes from, Thieves can always skin the cable and remove the copper wiring from the outer EVSE sheath to make it less conspicuous. And there's a decent amount of money to be made. Even if the stolen cable commands less money on the scrap market compared to, say, virgin copper cabling, it still represents a hefty profit for those who are desperate enough to steal in the first place. I've covered the how and the why so now let's look at how you can try and make sure that you are not a victim of this. And depending on where you live, what you can do will change. In parts of the world where type 2 charging cables are the preferred slow charging solution, you can usually remove the cable from the car and the charging station when not in use, coiling them up and putting them somewhere safe. Meaning that if you are in an area where you think there is a risk your charging cable might be stolen, it might be worth charging during the day and then unplugging your vehicle when charging is complete. But if you live somewhere where cables are attached to the charging station, things are a little more complicated. Luckily though, there are some things you can do to ensure that you're less likely to be a victim. The first, hopefully obvious one, is to make sure you charge somewhere people can't easily get to your car. This might mean parking behind a fence and a gate that's difficult to climb, or parking your vehicle inside a garage. Most cable thefts are opportunistic in their origin, although, as with Kelly Carmichael's theft, it's kind of clear someone had grokked there was a car there and a cable to be stolen before the actual theft took place, as the criminals were prepared carrying a tool bag and a set of bolt cutters. If you can't park behind some kind of secure structure, though, don't worry. There are some other ways you can help avoid attention from cable thieves. First, consider turning off lights on charging stations that are visible from the road. While not all charging stations allow you to turn off lights, you can always place a piece of tape over the lights to prevent them from shining into the night. The same is true for charge indicators on your car, although you might be able to just achieve the same effect with a piece of material placed over in-car charge indicators or by putting a piece of tape over charge port door indicators. Next, consider buying a security camera and point it at your charging station and EV charging spot. 
While cameras definitely don't stop thefts, they can help identify criminals and do offer some deterrent, especially if they're cameras with visible recording lines. I'm going to be clear here. I do not recommend you buy any old camera online, especially ones from companies that are known to share your personal data with law enforcement, and there are many that do that. I'm so not down with that, or the privacy concerns that come from that, but I am most certainly a fan of security cameras that connect to your local Wi-Fi and store data locally. My own personal home security cameras, for example, store all of their recordings locally, and while I can, if I want, access them remotely, they're stored behind a very strong password, which is also backed up by a secure two-factor authentication process. But look, I'm not going to dig into recommendations here because there are plenty of good videos online talking about home security cameras and why you shouldn't use Ring and similar devices. If you park on your driveway, you might also want to consider some form of motion-activated light that will turn on if it detects movement on your driveway. The best security lights are the ones that vary their on and off timing to make them seem a little more organic, as it's harder to tell if it's a person turning the light on or off, or if it's just an infrared sensor doing the duty. If you're really into home automation though, you can take things one step further, like programming an automation to turn on multiple lights inside your home and outside your home if motion is detected. I've bought some little timers like this in the past, but it's worth noting that some more expensive modern light systems allow you to select a very randomly timed operation specifically to deter ne'er-do-wells. And of course, you can also set your car up to sound an alarm if it's disconnected from the charging station. While not all cars offer this, and I've traditionally avoided this because it's annoying when it happens unexpectedly, it's a feature that, if offered, can help scare thieves away because most cable thieves now know that if they unplug the car from the charging station, the power from the station will be cut, making it safer for them to cut the cable and steal it. It also avoids the potential for tripping a circuit breaker in the home attached to the charging station and avoids damage to the car the charging station is connected to. It's actually the reason I don't recommend you lock your car to your charging station because at the end of the day, a determined thief is going to steal that cable. And if that means wrecking your car to get a few pounds of copper, they'll do it. I mean, it's not their car after all. The, the same is true for folks who have considered some kind of armoured cable protector that goes around their car's charging socket. If the cable can't be unplugged and someone cuts that cable while power is flowing, it could, for a very brief second, cause a short that could cause a lot of damage. Finally, Talk with other owners about any thefts in your area and be sure that your local EV community groups are aware of them. Obviously, the more people draw attention to thefts, the less likely it is that criminals will be able to attack an area again. But please do not take matters into your own hands. Vigilantism serves nobody and profiling innocent passers-by also makes things worse, not better. So don't do that either. So there you have it. I've explained how and why cable thefts occur. I've given you some of the things that you can do to counter those thefts and what you should most certainly not do in response. But have I missed something out? Let me know below. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube. They help cover our bills, pay our team, and make sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just over $10 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Mac McIntosh, Kyle Randall, Bryant E. Day, Shedrick Mask, and Robin Mayorga. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. 
If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at, address linked below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below. This month, we're getting ready to celebrate Pride with an amazing t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator Erin. Get yours today when it drops in early June by heading to our Red Bubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you've subscribed on Peertube or YouTube and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think that this one is also well worth a look. See you soon and as always, keep evolving!